Welcome into the Lakers Support by Chat Sports. Chase Sr. here with you. Appreciate all of you for rocking and rolling with us on the program today. And there's so much to talk about on this show because the Lakers have had a very busy offseason. Now, a lot of that has been conjecture. A lot of that has been rumors-based. But they're still, according to reports, pursuing Kyrie Irving, even though Shams Charani had said that the Lakers are not pursuing Kyrie. But let's be real. If Kevin Durant gets traded by the Brooklyn Nets, the Nets are not building with Kyrie, and that could open up an opportunity and an avenue for Los Angeles to bring a reunion to Los Angeles and reunite LeBron James as well as Kyrie Irving. Now, as far as what Shams Charania said on this beautiful Tuesday, no traction on a Lakers deal for Kyrie. He also said, quote, I'm not quite sure we're going to see that take place. Now, Conversely, on the other side, Brian Windhorst has been right about a lot of things throughout free agency. He looked at that jazz trade of Royce O'Neal. That has now become a viral meme of him and his soliloquy on ESPN. He predicted that the Heat were going to wait for the Kyrie Irving situation in Brooklyn to blow up so that Pat Riley could pursue Kevin Durant. He also was right in saying that James Harden was going to get traded to the Philadelphia 76ers. So there's a little bit of a battle between NBA insiders. And as far as Brian Windhorst goes, I think he's been the winner in the media landscape throughout the offseason because why? He's been right a lot. Will he be right about Kyrie? Only time will tell. As for the Lakers trade targets, that's kind of what our focus is on the Lakers report today. Obviously, we got to start off with Kyrie Irving because they're so – it's been so much buzz on that front about LeBron being open to teaming back up with Kyrie Irving and Kyrie making his way from the East Coast and BKN all the way out to the West Coast in Los Angeles. Now, this is what we know. Kyrie, for a couple of weeks now, not just for a couple of days, has been in L.A., He's been training there, and there's word, according to a lot of people close to him, that he wants this deal to happen. Again, Kyrie is not going to want to go back to Brooklyn if Kevin Durant isn't there. Now, is KD using this as a leverage play with the front office in Brooklyn to make them pay Kyrie Irving? Potentially, but... We're going to continue to monitor this situation because there's certainly some juice on that front. Before we continue to take a look at some Lakers trade targets, we have another challenge here inside the walls of Chat Sports. And here are our challenge results from last month in June as we were doing a like competition. Lakers support in at number five among all of the channels under the Chat Sports umbrella. Appreciate all of you for helping us out, showing up and showing out and representing the purple and gold. This month's challenge is subscribers. So if you want to stay in the know with all things Lakers, if you want a video every single day pertaining to the Lake Show, just hit that subscribe button down below or plug in the link youtube.com slash Lakers TV. We're going to continue to cook up heaters here on the Lakers report, trying to pick up as many subs as possible because Warriors today, they've been crushing us in terms of subs throughout the offseason. Trade target number two, Kevin Durant. Also of the Brooklyn Nets. Will he be formally of the Brooklyn Nets? Only time will tell on this front as well. Here's what John Hollinger said about KD coming to the Lakers and a potential trade package. Post Golden State, I'm not sure he's interested in going to another place where he'd be perceived as riding somebody else's coattails. On the other hand, if he's riding with Kyrie, this is the one place where they can keep riding. And one can argue that with LeBron James getting on in years, it's still a chance for Durant to stamp it as, quote, his team. How would it work? Here you go. There's really only one way. By sending Anthony Davis to the Nets, this is the single best player Brooklyn could get in any realistic Durant trade scenario, and he's signed for two more years. Brooklyn has to at least think about it, right? And here is that trade idea from John Hollinger, and I've kind of said this all along. If the Lakers want to seriously bring in KD or Kyrie Irving or for the topic of this conversation, both players, you're going to have to part ways with Anthony Davis. Now, you can absorb that blow of losing AD, who's special, who's a unicorn, who when he's right, it's a top five player. If you bring in KD, who's no doubt and unquestionably a top five guy, and Kyrie Irving, one of the league's best point guards when he's on the floor. So if you have to part ways with Anthony Davis, Russell Westbrook, Max Christie, who you selected at number 35, a couple of first round picks in 2027 and 2029, then a couple of first round pick swaps in four seconds, would you do it? 
let me know in the comment section. I'm fascinated to see where the fan base is at. Would you make this trade on your screen right now? This is the pinned comment on today's show. So if you get hit with that YouTube ad break, just scroll on down and get your votes in. Type a Y for yes. Type an N for no. I would certainly think about it if I'm Rob Palenka. Lakers trade target number three. Miles Turner, it is clear by now that the Pacers' direction moving forward, they're in a little bit of a rebuilding phase. That's why they traded away Malcolm Brogdon, because they want to allow Tyrese Halliburton to steer the offensive ship. Love the selection of Chris Duarte. You look at what they did in the NBA draft, stockpiling some more young assets. So does it make sense to hold on to Miles Turner, who's really expensive up to this point and is an older player and championship contending teams would love to trade for him? I just don't envision how Damian Jones is really going to start at the five for the Lakers. And if he does, I think that's a problem for the starting lineup. And it's pretty telling about where the Lakers' depth is at. You bring in one of the best shot blockers, you improve a defense that last year was atrocious, and Miles Turner can also shoot the three ball a little bit, so he gives you floor spacing as well. As for trade target number four, I actually think this might be the most realistic among all of the players who we're talking about on the show, Josh Richardson of the San Antonio Spurs. He's been dealt a lot over the last couple of years. Could he get dealt again? This trade could happen, and it was one that was pitched out there by Bleacher Report, a player-for-player -player swap. Taylor Horton Tucker, Josh Richardson, both with contracts in the neighborhood of one another. And let's be frank, THT has not lived up to the expectations of what the Lakers put forward for him when he signed that three-year deal worth around $30 million. And he's a young player who might need to go elsewhere, get a change of scenery to maximize his ability. With Josh Richardson, you know who you're getting. THT, this past year, he shot less than 27% from three. What do the Lakers need? Athleticism, defense, three-point shooting, and Richardson can give you that. He has a clunky form to his shot, but he was able to connect from his downtown attempts on 41.5% of his three-point opportunities. And Josh Richardson gives the Lakers something that they currently don't have a lot of on this team, a good defender who can also hit three. So among all of these trade ideas and these trade candidates, I think this is one of the most realistic targets, and it's one of the deals that I would like making and think about making if I'm running basketball operations for the Lakers. If you want to rip me in the comment section, you can certainly do that. Last trade target here, Terrence Ross of the Orlando Magic. And this would really add to the Lakers bench production from a scoring standpoint. Terrence Ross has been getting it done for a long time on the offensive side of the floor. And you look at what the Lakers were bereft of last year. Bench production, offensive scoring production in general. And that's what Terrence Ross would be able to bring to this roster. Something that they sorely need, something that they sorely missed last year. They had some of the most open three-point looks in the NBA a year ago. They couldn't capitalize on them. And this kind of goes back to my thoughts on Kyrie and getting rid of Russell Westbrook. If LeBron James is playing with a point guard and players who are good three-point shooters, I think the Lakers team improves dramatically by about 10 wins. By having Russell Westbrook, he can have as many open three-point opportunities as he wants, can't capitalize on them because he's never been a good three-point shooter. So those are some thoughts right there on five trade targets for the Los Angeles Lakers. You look at the list here, Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, obviously it might be unrealistic to pull one or two of them off. Miles Turner has to be thrown into the equation as well because he could be on the trade block. Josh Richardson of the San Antonio Spurs, then Terrence Ross of the Orlando Magic. With all of that, I ask you this here on NBA Now by Chat Sports. Name a player you want the Lakers to trade for. Let me know in the comments section. And before we get on out of here, make sure you subscribe to the channel. That is the competition that we're having here in the month of July among all channels here at Chat Sports. More than 1 mil subscribers across the entire company. Let's continue to add to that number and let's add to the Lakers Report sub count, youtube.com slash Lakers TV.